So Grasshopper is a large payload, autonomous, uh, contested logistics delivery vehicle. It is air launched and it is single use and it's very low cost. So the Air Force is very interested in delivering operationally relevant amounts of payload at uh, some standoff distances from our host aircraft. So we want to basically deliver pallets, but not immediately underneath where the host aircraft is. So Grasshopper solves that need by giving us standoff. We've got about a 10 to 1 glide ratio. So as soon as it leaves the host aircraft, it autonomously navigates to its target and then lands under parachute, gives us 500 pounds of payload. Yeah, so Grasshopper is large. 500 pounds is a lot of weight. Uh, and we want to make sure we give that payload volume so you can deliver those bulky or those really non-dense payloads. So MREs is a good example of something that's not very dense, but you'd want to deliver a lot of them. So as a very large airframe, it's single use, uh, but we've, we've worked really hard to keep its cost down. So it's using some non kind of standard aerospace technologies, a lot of plywood, a lot of vacuum plastic too. So we don't really care what you want to put inside of it. Uh, it's got a pretty significant volume. So there are a number of payloads that are volume limited, so MREs, but for the most part, if you can fit it in there, it's under 500 pounds, it'll fly. So Grasshopper has got a pretty long history. It went by a number of names previously, and there were a number of efforts that kind of led to this current design. Right now, Grasshopper is operationally fielded, so very high tech readiness level, and we have customers going directly to our manufacturer and buying them. So it's air launched. We can't talk about which host aircraft it's launched from, but it's always air launched. So it's fully autonomous. So uh, give it some waypoints, and as it releases from its host aircraft, it navigates to those waypoints, and when it gets to the target, it'll loiter and then pop its parachute. So the entire airframe's parachuted, got a little crush attenuating nose on the front, so that helps us reduce some of the shock loading when it hits the ground. Yeah, so if we had a unit that's downrange, uh, maybe they are in an area that we can't drop directly over them, we'd use grasshoppers, so we'd load it up on the ground with food, ammunition, radios, whatever they need, and then in the air we can program it, and then as soon as it's released from its host aircraft, its wings will deploy, and it'll navigate you know, miles and miles to its target, and then once it's over that target, parachute will pop out, the entire thing drops to the ground, and then the front of the vehicle's got this crush attenuating nose. So when it hits the ground, that'll crush, keeps that shock loading low, and the crew on the ground can pull up to 500 pounds of that payload out. So yeah, so AFRL's rule, we're looking at two main efforts based on this kind of baseline grasshopper. So the first effort, we want to extend its range. So we're going to power this system. Uh, we want to get out to about 500 miles. And then the second effort, uh, we're very concerned with being able to navigate in a GPS denied environment. So there are a number of ways you can do that, and we're looking at all sorts of different possibilities.